How's it going? I don't think I've spoken today. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How you doing? Well, how's it going over there? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but whenever <laughs> I hear somebody say like, this is the first time I'm speaking today, and like, because I know what that feeling's like. <laughs> It's just such it's such a messed up feeling. I was like, I was yep. just I was think I was like I was like wait I started screaming and I was like wait a second I need to I need to start off slower. Talking is such a basic human function, but to not do it for an extended period of time, like for an entire day, it really does mess you up. I, I I'm realizing oh. the only thing I've said today before that was pick up for Bob when I was picking up my empanadas. <laughs> So, so I was I I you know I was mentally prepared for this podcast. I was not physically prepared for this podcast. And you know what it is like? It's always funny to me. I don't know <laughs> why, but the sensation of like your first words being like five hours into your day and it messes you up is always funny it, to it, me. It 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 threw me for a loop real quick. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway hi guys welcome to the podcast today we have a fun and exciting podcast because we're going to talk about yes. indie games because that's all that happened in the past week was some indie well, games happened that's not all that happened i would like to just apologize right off the bat for not putting an article about master chief having sex oh you don't have to apologize uh, I, for I forgot <laughs> you don't have to apologize i'm glad you didn't do that because <laughs> it's like the indie direct and Master Chief getting it on are like the two biggest news in gaming this past do week. Do we? Do we? Did you watch any of the Halo show? I've only seen the first episode, and I feel like that's enough. Okay. Uh, so you've played more Halo games than I have. I played canonically... one and a half Halo games. Oh, maybe you haven't done. Is he canonically celibate? It's never brought up. Okay. Like I. I, I, I according to the deep and rich halo lore that you only get from the books and all the bullshit rts games um he is celibate but in the game itself i would describe it more as just sexless it he's did, just a thing he's it, just yeah. a thing that like walks and kills it, so, yeah, like, it just doesn't make sense is, like for not him. a part of his yeah it just doesn't make sense for him yeah. to be in an intimate relationship he's literally uh uh a genetically He's, engineered soldier. Like I feel like yeah. having uh, uh, hormones is like not a good thing for him. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't yeah, achieve so. the goal of what he was created to do. So like, why well, even bother? Even be, even beyond that, like I don't know. The games just portray him as such a blank slate that, like, as a player, you don't really project any sort of emotion onto him, much less like sexual emotion. You know, right? Right. Oh, it, it's literally just like, I've got to kill somebody. I'm like that's that's his whole character. Sometimes mm -hmm. he gets sad, but that's about it. Yeah, I have uh, I have I have less than zero interest in watching the show. I already don't like <laughs> watching shows, and seeing all of the all of the little bits of the stuff on Twitter about this show, it's just making me want to watch I mean, it less it, and less. It, it's it's very weird. Like I didn't hate what I saw the first episode, but I don't think this is something that can sustain like one season, let alone the two it just got renewed for. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, I guess they're. Uh, that's so. I mean, pa it's Power Mountain, so I guess it's getting the most views they can get. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh. But. Anyway, we're gonna talk about indie games today. Uh, yes. uh, and some other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. but first I want to thank some people like, uh, the struggle bugs. Thanks for the eight months. Uh, AU retriever. Thanks for 15 months. If you aren't dressed as a turtle, I'm going to be sad. I, I'm not dressed as a turtle. <laughs> be sad. Uh, that's cause Jackson was dressed as a turtle today. Oh, uh, well, Car you can't really dress as a turtle until shredders revenge comes out. And then will, will be dressed like a turtle, right? Uh, sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> Carl Lover Derm. Thank you for the five months. Bob, I'm glad you chose your first words of the day to greet me on our anniversary. Oh, five months? A five-month anniversary? Do you celebrate that? Oh, 
I feel like it's uh, a little weird to celebrate that. <laughs> well, when you're in high school, you do. What did you get me for our five month anniversary? Uh, all right. Today, we're talking about indie games on the Switch. There was a little Switch Indie Direct last week, but I want to talk about more than that because this Direct wasn't that great. I want to talk about some of the great indie games that are coming out that might not have been here. Okay. Uh, but I mean, let's let's go through the indie direct anyway. I didn't yeah. watch this because it was early in the morning, and I didn't care. <laughs> uh, uh, I made the mistake of watching it uh, while I was cooking, and therefore was not paying attention. All right, to the entire thing. I, I saw the recap um, on Eurogamer after the fact. Yeah, I, I I went back and saw some of the other games. Some of the games do look pretty good and interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, kind of an underwhelming direct. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Indie World Showcase. Uh, Con Morno in the chat says, what have you been playing on Steam Deck? I'll be honest. I haven't been playing the Steam Deck much. I haven't been playing much of anything much, honestly. But I did just download two games because they were a dollar. Uh, and this is the another problem with Steam, with Steam is that I'm going to just buy all of these games for a dollar and then never play them. Uh I think we lost Will already. Uh, Wario64 tweeted these uh, this one game that I was interested in. And then on that website, I saw another game. Okay, so Blazing Chrome. It's this game. Blazing Chrome was a dollar on Steam. And then I went to the Fanatical. And uh, Kunai was also a dollar. And that game I've been wanting to play. So I just got both of them. Now they're on my Steam. And that's just what's going to happen. I'm just going to collect the games. And then that's it. Um, anyway, I'm going to continue the show until Will fixes himself. Uh, what do we got? Is this in order? I'm going to assume that it's in order. Uh... This is from IGN. The first game we have o- Oblets, and it's Adorable World. Uh, this is Pokemon, Pokemon type game. Oblets released in early access on Xbox and PC in July 2020. And Switch owners will soon get to visit its Adorable World when it is released on the platform in sem- summer 2022. Will, welcome. Hi, I'm back. I didn't. I literally did nothing, and I died. All right. But I got over it. Alongside right. growing and training creatures called Ooblets, players will also help uh, have to help Badge Town grow and prosper. Much like Animal Crossing, Ooblets gives players the freedom of customization, crafting, making friends with your neighbors, and much more. Oh, and you can participate in epic dance battles. And who doesn't want that? I thought it was like a Pokemon thing. I thought the Ooblets were like Pokemons. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of both. This uh, was announced in like twenty twenty in twenty twenty in the like wholesome direct or something. Yeah, but and it's, it's now been on, coming to the Switch. Yeah, and it's been on early access on Xbox and PC since then. Okay. I uh, mean, what's the score? I feel like the problem if they keep comparing it to Animal Crossing, but yeah, why? If that's the case, why would you get it on Switch <laughs> when you can just play Animal Crossing? I, I, uh, the, assume, we're assuming that these indie games that are uh, like like in the vein of these Nintendo games, they're supposed to yeah. fix some problems that these Nintendo games have. Or they have like a unique uh, selling point that differentiates it enough from uh, the Nintendo version of it. So hopefully Epic, epic Dance Battles will be enough. <laughs> There's no meta score. I'm curious. Probably didn't have enough Probably didn't have enough people to review it for a meta score. It was popular. Yo, am it, I gonna have to watch an ad after or, before every one of these freaking trailers? Or I was gonna run. Was it them. popular or was it just, you know, that it was, you know, let me let me rephrase that. Take your time. Was it pop? <laughs> was it popular? Was it popular with reviewers? Is what I'm saying. With like gaming publications, did gaming publications review it? Because it might have been popular with players. It was but not popular with the announcement, and that's it. Okay. All right, I just tried to play all of the videos so that the ad would play, and now the whole website broke. <laughs> I, I've, 
I regret putting IGN up here because their video player is um, the worst. <laughs> Eurogamer uh, Indie Direct recap. Uh, this was six days ago, May 20. No, this is Nintendo Live, yeah. damn it. Eurogamer is the one I had, that, I, that I looked at. Yeah. I had the escapist uh, recap up here, but they had no videos at all, so I took it out. Indie World. Yeah, Indie World Showcase is the proper name for this thing. <laughs> How do you search a site? Site colon Eurogamer.com. Nope, I gotta, I've never seen that man before. <laughs> Google couldn't do it. Oh, it's, net. Uh, it's Eurogamer.net. Net. Yeah. Uh, why can't I see it? Uh, this is just riveting audio material for our podcast listeners. Here we go. I found it. I'm going to put it in our Yay. document here. Uh, all right. All right. Well, we talked about Ooblets already. Uh, yes, we, 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 st we still know what type of game it is. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly Animal Crossing. I thought it was more like Pokemon, but there are a lot of cute little characters in it from the last time I saw it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure being on the Switch will convert some players. I uh, will not be playing it because I uh, <laughs> have limited time and the game has to floor me or else I don't want it. Um, yeah. Also, I didn't know Ooblets was in this. Maybe it wasn't in the Eurogamer article. No, it's right there at the top. Of the Eurogamer article. I have an ad there. That might be why. <laughs> uh, anyway, the next one is Bactora. Uh, hack and slash RPG, uh, hack and slash action RPG, shown off has a 2022 release date. Uh, it's coming out in autumn. Eurogamer also has an ad before every freaking video. <laughs> but we like oh, them yeah, more. I, remember I like one. them more. Yes. Okay, as I say that, the uh, whole screen turns white. All right, I hate every game journalist publication. <laughs> <laughs> this is more of like a, um, like a Diablo gauntlet esque hack and slash type of game. Uh it looks interesting, but I don't know if it's something I could get into. It looks like it's it's just one of those like fifty hours uh until you beat it types of games. Yeah. Yeah. It, it I mean I'm not a big fan of these styles of games, like Diablo esque style games. Uh yeah. so this just looks like a worse Diablo. And I'm trying to see, like, maybe somebody can tell me what this does different and better than a game like that. Yeah. Like, what were those games missing that a game like this could could add to it? Because uh, right now I'm just, why wouldn't I just play Diablo? Yeah. Um, next we have the one that everybody was telling me I would like, Alekhead. Yes. Oh, this is one of the more popular games of the Direct. Uh. It was made by one developer and launched last year on Steam to warm reception. Now it's heading to the Nintendo Switch this summer. It's like a puzzle platformer where you play like an electric guy. And it's got like a really, really accurate 8-bit aesthetic. So so, so I uh, I like the fact that it's made by one guy. That means mm -hmm. that he probably spent a lot of time on the level design. Because, I mean, there's, there's really not much going on here in terms of yeah. visuals. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of interested. But this didn't really, you know, it didn't really blow me away. Um, yeah. It looks like a puzzle platformer. I'm, I, I'm, I'm down to give it a try. I don't know if it'll hook me, though. Um, uh, unfortunately, I do like uh, some visuals with my, uh, <laughs> with my gameplay, unfortunately. Like, vis visuals I do hook me. It, I mean, you could... I would compare this to like a, an original Game Boy type game in terms of like the, the very minimalistic uh, color palette and visual palette of it. It, it reminds so. me of N Plus. It's just like a gray yeah. and like one color and, and, yeah. and it's just levels, you know? Um, but that, I think that's I think that's part of the game. I think, it, you know, adding to it probably wouldn't make the, make it the same game, you know? But like dog or i 
had some character, you know. Yeah. It was still a Game Boy game, but like there was some character yeah. there. Um, but I mean, I'll give I'll give it a try when it comes out. Um, right. Unless it's out now. <laughs> <laughs> it is oh, not. Oh, last year on Steam. Steam. Yes. Oh no. Oh no! I might have to play it on Steam. Now I have no excuse and not to play games on Steam. And it's always cheaper on Steam. Oh, hi, Anthony Carboni. Anthony Carboni's here. He says, I think the hey. pixel art is the biggest thing holding that game back. It's so sad because you always want to be like, you know, the fancy visuals don't matter or art style doesn't matter, but it's like, that's what and makes you, me immediately interested yeah. in a game. We talk about how graphics don't matter, but like, it's got to at least, you know, be they, visually they appealing in they, some they way. They can help. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need it to be 120 frames per second, but I need it to be cute. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then there's Soundfall. Uh, this is another one people were talking about, but I don't know if players. anybody... Okay. <laughs> this uh, is a game that sorry, people were talking sorry. about, but uh, I, and nobody was pointing me in this direction. Nobody was like, this is a Bob game. No, it's definitely not a Bob game. Soundfall is a musical action game for up to four players that procedurally generates levels to music... Uh, available on the Switch right now. Also available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It looks kind of cool. Like, what this has that the uh, Batora... Bat Batora didn't have, like, this sort of, like, cute art style. Uh, yeah. But it still looks kind of, you know, like the same vibe. Um, I guess well, it's more I of, like, say, a shooter. Soundfall definitely looks more, like, upbeat and faster. Mm -hmm. than Batora was. I think that it helps that, you know, it's procedurally generated level, level set to music. Oh. So I think that that's something that, like, would keep the flow of the game moving much quicker than something like Batora, which was which is an RPG. So there's going to be a lot of, like, slow parts, a lot of downtime in it. Uh, and, and it does have co-op. So I am a little interested yeah. in that game. That game does look pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how long I would play a game like that because I don't know. Mindless uh, mindless shmups like that. I don't know how, how much that could hook me. But uh, I'd play it yeah. with somebody and see how see how much fun we have. Oh, when is that out? Uh, it's out now. Oh. Now so I have Get now on I, it. Now I feel like I, I just got called out. Like I have to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Wild Frost. Uh, Wild Frost, a game I totally did not do not remember being in this direct. <laughs> uh, a card battling game published by Chucklefish. Looks like a mix of Slay the Spire and Hearthstone. It's coming this winter. Is this that game that Woods? Been, no, this is not. Woods been playing some game that just straight up looks like a knockoff of Hearthstone, and he claims it's really good, but it looks like Hearts. It looks exactly like Hearthstone. Right. Uh, this does not look like hearts. I mean, it, it looks like it's the same no. freaking game. It's just like, you know, more cartoony. More animated, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we're not card game people here. But I did. I actually no. kind of liked Hearthstone. I played it for a little bit. It was a good phone yeah. game. Yeah, it's actually I not mean, bad. I, the card game has to be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly simplistic for, in order for me to, like, show any interest in it. I remember the only time I've ever tried playing Magic the Gathering, and I had to stop in the middle of the tutorial because I couldn't take it. <laughs> it was too much for me. Have you tried Hearthstone? No. It's actually very simple. Yeah? Yeah, there, there, there's a tutorial, and it, it, it it's very easy to follow along. All right. Um, anyway. Uh, next, I'm actually interested in this one, Tabs. Yes. Totally accurate. Battle Simulator already on PC and Xbox heading to Switch this summer. This looks uh, fun. So it's... Oh, wait. Am I wrong? Oh, I was thinking of a completely different game. <laughs> I was thinking, thinking of that of? Battle Royale that looks like... The characters look like this. Totally accurate. Are you thinking of Chivalry? No, no, no. I'm thinking of a Battle Royale game uh, that looks... That has the characters that look like this and the guns freaking flying around while they're moving. I think it's called Totally Accurate Something. And I was hoping this was that. <laughs> no, it's not Fall Guys. I know what Fall Guys is. <laughs> Damn it. Battle Royale. They, they look like that. I mean, is, maybe if I don't... 
totally no accurate idea. battlegrounds. Okay. I thought this was totally accurate battlegrounds. I'm I'm significantly more disappointed now that this is not. Well, is that. it a is it a sister series? Is it like part of a franchise in some I way? I guess. Because because totally accurate battlegrounds is literally like PUBG, but with these weird wacky like characters and right. like weird physics and stuff. So, uh, I'm sad. Uh, but I, but fine. I hope I hope you love tabs, everybody. <laughs> it's the same devs, apparently. Okay. Yeah, it, so it oh, sounds it sounds like sense. it's uh, yeah. It sounds like it's the uh, say like a series. Yeah. Anyway, the one that I liked that uh, the one that I think piqued my interest the most was Gunbrella. Oh yeah, same here. A pixely side-scrolling platformer where you hold a gun meets umbrella to traverse and blast enemies. Looks lovely. Coming to Switch next year. Developed, uh, published by Devolver. So this kind of looks like a weird, like, Celeste, but it's a shooter also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's, like, actual like, worlds. It's not just levels you traverse. Yeah, like, it's uh, like... it's. It's like the messenger, but a Western with guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's more like it because you have. It looks like you have like abilities, and you can like glide with the um, with a gun umbrella and stuff. Yeah, it looks really cool. This I'm interested in. This I might actually play through the whole thing. 2023, yeah. though. I know. Rip. That's gonna be hard. I hope. I hope they can like keep interest in this game until then, because this looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Kate says, everyone bugging out over this, but it looks like it's not the game for me. Well, Kate, well, what do you think of OFK? <laughs> we are OFK, the musical narrative game about the making of a band, dating, and paying rent in Los Angeles, arrives with weekly episodes and interactive music videos on Nintendo Switch this summer. Uh, this was previously announced in the uh, PlayStation, uh, in a PlayStation State of Play <laughs> a while back. That's so, where I saw it. Now it's coming to Switch. Still don't really know who OFK are or if they're any good. Um, it, but they're it, they're getting a video game. It's a made up band for the game. It's it's like a it guy. Is. It's a guy who scored the game. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so I don't this know. Is a gorillas situation here. I was gonna say it's like gorillas, but it's just the game. You know, like right. it's not like right. well, yeah. If this if this game takes off, we might see you know. OFK on tour or whatnot. Right. Right. Uh I mean it looks cool. I'm really I'm down for this art style. Yeah, I, I mean I'll check it out. I'm interested in weird ass games like this. But you like if, narrative. If your music stuff. sucks, man. I do. But if your the music sucks, pretty good. man, I will I will harsh I will be very harsh on it. I'll say the I'm music. Thirty five years old, I'm very grumpy when it comes to new music. <laughs> I listened to the new Florence and the Machine C D uh recently because I'm a big Florence fan. And I have a little bugaboo about it. Oh, what's that? The album is called Dance Fever. Okay. All of the songs are slow songs and ballads. <laughs> I mean, isn't that their I'm thing? Not, I, I look, I wasn't expecting techno or anything, but they've done very upbeat songs that you can like at least, you know, if not dance, like move your body to. None of that on this new record. It's not bad. But if you're gonna call your record "Dance Fever," you should have something like that can make you want to move. Okay. Have you listened Just to the new Kendrick? Uh, <laughs> it's no, but it's it keeps popping up on my suggested feed. So maybe I will have to listen to it. That's what uh, that's what everybody's going nuts about right now. Yeah. Yes. As as I'm sure it's well aware to our viewers. I'm usually not in step with what's cool in terms of music. Uh, I finally got into Turnstile like way too late. Turnstile? Yeah. Are they? Aren't they like a hardcore band? Or my my? Yeah. They are a hardcore no, band. They're, yeah. You listen to a hardcore band? It, they're a hardcore band, but like it's like more it, punk. Th yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. Uh. All right. Silt. 
Totally forgot this one was in the direct too. Uh, <laughs> a hand drawn noir ocean side scroller where you can possess aquatic animals to use their strengths. Um, it was previously released on PC and it's coming to Switch in June. A lot of people were talking about this one too. And they were saying uh, it looks like limbo, but underwater. It does. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm. I, I don't think I'm interested. <laughs> He, he, I, here's I here's one problem I have with this game. The underwater levels are always the worst. This it's is true. a whole game. I mean, it's got to be like really, really freaking interesting if you're going to make a whole underwater game. Right. And I mean, art style alone, like we said, it'll help, but there's got to be more to it. Right. It looks cool. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's an art style that I think... Uh, uh, you have to, I don't know, it's like niche. Like, you have to, like, be into this type of thing. And yeah. if you're not, then you're not, you know, it's not exactly like an art style that everybody's going to be down for. Right. Um, it's, like, ugly on purpose, kind of. It's like ink, you know, like ink drawing, yeah. whatever. Like, uh, yeah, like Tim Burton-y. Yeah. Uh, mini Motorways. This uh, I'm interested in. I don't know if uh, the Switch is the way to go, though, for Mini Motorways. Uh, it's uh, it's already on Apple Arcade and PC, uh, and it's on Switch right now. Can I get it on my phone? Can I just download it? It said Apple Arcade. Yeah, let's look. Let's look in real time. Because my Apple Arcade uh, trial didn't end yet. Did Did I cancel it oh my god goats they're 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 showing off goat simulator yeah what is it mini motorways. mini motorways i've seen other people play this it's actually yes. people play it on twitch and stuff get all i've been using this apple arcade like trial that i apparently have till october is to play threes and i feel like it's such a waste <laughs> but like is threes always. is the perfect threes is like the perfect phone game so i really don't want to play anything else how it says share apple arcade with your family for free how many people can i include I think like six. Oh my god all right well we'll we'll uh we'll discuss that later <laughs> well i'm i'm already in a family with my wife right now so for apple arcade for just in general because when, uh, when you do a family account with uh, apple it shares everything oh, iCloud, Apple TV, Apple Music. I remember we did that. Yeah. It, it, and then uh, we did that with our parents because I bought, no, I bought an iPhone or something. And then they yeah. uh, wanted my. Uh, my the, Mom the, had to like see free... the Jennifer Aniston show. There's, That's what do, it was. there's a Jennifer Aniston show and it's on Apple TV. Do I have that? I have to pay for that? Oh, I don't want to pay for that. Oh, you yeah. paid for it. Oh, can you get it for me? Oh, thank you. So I included her in my family so that she could watch that. But yeah. it also like crossed over our payment information. So like, yes, I bought so, like I think my Clip Studio subscription on my iPad was like going to her or something. I don't know. It got weird. Yeah. So we stopped doing that. Uh. Anyway. Uh. So I'll, I mean, I'm gonna try mini motorways. But I'm gonna do it on my phone. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't <laughs> seem like it needs to be on the Switch. Uh, next, we got Wayward Strand. I don't remember this at all. A, a narrative game starring a teen journalist in an airborne hospital full of uh, people and their stories to uncover. Floats onto Nintendo Switch uh, July 21st. This I remember. This is an Australian-made game, and it's set in Australia. Uh, and you basically go into a hospital, and you interview sick people and the hospital uh, staff. Uh, so I do remember this now. This yeah. looks very sad, and I don't yes. ever want to see this again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like this at all. This makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, this is this is definitely gonna be, be one of those like, I, like it can break you type games. I hate this. I hate this so much. I yeah. don't want to be here in this game. <laughs> I want to be anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, anyway, next is Cult of Lamb, which was the big deal at PAX this year. 
uh, I didn't get to play it, but it was the biggest uh, screen that they had at the Devolver Digital booth. And everybody that oh. I talked to said their favorite game that they played was Cult of Lamb, or the one that they were most interested in seeing was Cult of Lamb. And I only got to see the gameplay, and it looked cool. I couldn't play it because the line was huge, and I didn't make an appointment because I didn't realize uh, this would be a big deal game. A dark sheep raising dungeon, dungeon crawler uh, published by Devolver coming uh, this year. No date yet. So it looks like a sort of hack and slash dungeon crawler, but hack and slash got, dungeon crawler with like animal farm crossing management. elements. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got like weird stuff like that. I don't know if I, I don't know how into that I'll be. I mean, the, listen, Art yeah. style is cute as shit. I'm liking it. Yeah. But uh, there is definitely an audience for this. Not these two guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to be managing my farm in between dungeons. You know, that's not yeah. a, I just want the action. I want straight up action. Maybe you can do that in the game, though. There's games where like all this, you know, nonsense is like an aside that you don't have to do. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we also got another Crab's Treasure, which is a game people were telling me I should look into, but I think just because of its, of how ridiculous it is. Uh, yeah, this is probably the most popular game of the whole show. Going under developer Argo Crab is making a Souls-like game, another Crab's Treasure for next year, notably as the developer had previously suggested it's not partnering again with Team 17 on this one. Hmm. I love I'd like uh, to so, note that their name is Agro Crab. Oh, like Agro I, Crag, but crab. yes, I don't know how to read. That makes it so much more better. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is basically Dark Souls, but with uh, you play as a crab, and yes. you can get different shells, and the different shells are you know different types of shields. Uh, this looks like a lot of thought went into making this joke game. <laughs> yeah it's dark souls with a crab i don't know yeah. uh i think that's why people are uh is that is why people are so interested in this because it's just a ridiculous yeah. take on the the souls formula yeah there's another game that is a souls like uh that is also ridiculous but i guess we'll talk about that later when we talk about other uh games indie games that are coming out this year yeah. uh Next, we have Gibbon, which looked interesting. Yes. Uh, Gibbon Beyond the Tree, a treetop adventure from, about freedom and survival where you play as a lost Gibbon. Uh, there's also uh, Opus Echo of Star Song, full bloom edition, a narrative adventure which mixes anime, storytelling, and cosmic conundrums. So, so Gibbon looks like Ali Ali, but you're a monkey. Yes. There's like grinding and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like weird, but it uh, looks very pretty. Yeah. But like, uh, I kind of just want to play Ali Ali. I still haven't played Ali Ali I know. World. Me neither. And I don't remember Opus. Yeah. Which one was Opus again? I'm waiting 10 seconds for the trailer. Okay. While you wait, I'll also just say that they did a, uh, one of those montages at the end, um, mm -hmm. and they showed off games including Card Shark, uh, Guidebook to Babel, uh, One Shot, World Machine Edition, Idol Manager, and Cursed to Golf. Oh, they did show Cursed to Golf. It, is, it was in their montage, yeah. Very cool. Cursed to Golf is yeah. one of the games I was going to talk about that uh, I thought they didn't talk about. Um, that is one that I discovered at, uh, PAX. Uh, where is it? It's right here. Uh, it's in my PAX East video that nobody saw because my, uh, videos uh, about conventions don't do too good. Uh, oh, it's also in my Steam Deck video, uh, because the demo is out on Steam right now. You can play it on your computer or your Steam Deck. Uh, it's a golf game. It's just a golf game with like little fun little things. You, it's a two D golf game with like little fun little like like cards that you get to, as like modifiers. Like you can have yeah. a mulligan card, or you can have a card that like boosts your shot a little bit, or you can stop time and all this other cool stuff. Um, 
so that looks fun uh, it's coming out for the switch uh sometime in the summer i think um yes so that's an indie game that i'm excited for i still haven't beaten the trailer uh the the, the, yeah. the demo it's uh pretty long um aside from that there's also this game which was at the same publisher actually while i'm talking to the developer here you can see the little guy behind him it's a stick figure this was this is a souls like game uh it's called nostalgia it's a it's a souls like game with souls like combat mm -hmm. uh this article sucks you play as a stick figure. You play as a stick figure because, like, I don't know, the world's, like, turning 8-bit or something, and, like, you have right. it the worst. So, like, you are basically a stick figure, and you're fighting against everybody to, like, I guess bring the world back. Uh, and it's, like, tongue-in-cheek, kind of, like, funny. Um, right. Yeah, so... Uh, that looks pretty cool if you like Souls-like games. Uh, this is uh, coming to Steam, and they had uh, other games. So they had a big banner at PAX, and they had Steam, I think, Xbox, and some other games. But where the Switch logo would have been on the banner had a big piece of tape over it. <laughs> uh. So I think it's going to come to the Switch. They just weren't allowed to announce it. So uh, Right. Yeah. I grilled the developer on that, and they were like, "Ah, it's not that you didn't say it. You didn't say anything." So, um, anyway, uh, what other, what are some other indie games that they didn't talk about? I don't know. I feel like every time they do one of those indie directs or indie world showcase, sorry, branding is important. Mm -hmm. uh, the games are always like coming much later in the year or like next year, and like. I don't remember if half of these games <laughs> That's true. have come out, you know? I remember, I don't remember the name of it, but it was like a Pacific Islanders themed uh, side scrolling brawler. And I don't know if it ever came out or not. <laughs> and it looked really interesting. There's a game called Tinykin that looks like it's going to be like a, like a, like a Pikmin type deal. Uh, with, I guess, yeah. more platforming in it, which looks pretty cool. Uh, I have no idea when this is coming out, uh, but this will be on the Switch. Uh, the, it's a 3D world with 2D characters. What do you call that, Will? <laughs> 3D world with 2D characters. Yeah. Uh, 2.5D. <laughs> 2.745D. Uh, super pay uh, yeah super paper mario i guess um and then there's also treasure's revenge can we call that an, an indie game is that allowed i technically it is because it's an independent studio making it all right so teenage mutant ninja turtles shredder's revenge is coming out uh yes. pretty soon isn't it i don't think it ever gave a date uh, which is well pissing me off because like i would like to know when so I, I can get it. I think summer. It just um, says mid-2022 on the Wikipedia page. Well, I played it. It's very good. Uh, it's it's not as much mashing as the original Turtles in Time. Uh, there's actually things mm -hmm. you can do, and it feels like you have an impact on the gameplay instead of just mashing and dying. Um, right. And plus, uh, uh, the, the, the pixel art's really nice and the animation is very yeah. cute and there's all these like little easter eggs going on St stuff going on while you're playing the game it's really cool yeah um, other than that not sure what other indie games I'm looking forward to yeah uh, it's uh, really gonna bother me that I can't remember the name of that game the little Pacific Islander brawler game yeah maybe it's out is you it out? It? Chat, let me know. Have you ever played Unpacking? It's out on the Switch. Yeah, it's out on Switch. I really want to. I might just get it. I, I, it's it's like one of the highest rated games on Steam or something ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's like hypnotic. The way you just like un take things out of your box and put them on the shelf. It looks so boring. I know, <laughs> but... <laughs> It's one of those like popping bubble wrap things, I guess. 
you know okay oh here's another one that we forgot which is going to be the thumbnail because i already made the thumbnail for this bomb rush <laughs> cyberfunk oh bob please put some respect on that name i think i said it pretty loud <laughs> <laughs> no it's not the volume okay it's you got to extend the final word so uh, it's not show, show me show rush. me what i'm doing wrong bomb rush cyberfunk it like it like cut you out for Tell a me second. Okay. you did it so you did it so uh you know flamboyant yes. that it that it discord was was <laughs> didn't, didn't like it that's that's yeah so that's how i have to do it i have to do it so that discord doesn't like it well discord sucks uh yeah this is uh the spiritual successor to jet grind jet grind radio um with like the original creators and the, i think the original composer as well yes so uh hideki naganuma yes i'm pumped he, for this he is a a, a a twitter god yes uh his his twitter account is very interesting uh yeah also he's like he just turned 50 <laughs> damn um but yeah this just looks like uh jet grind radio or jet set radio yeah. or whatever aren't they doing a new jet oh no that was a rumor there's a rumor that they're working yeah, on like, uh, some weird sega's stuff like sega's looking to like relaunch a lot of their classic titles mm -hmm. and they're probably going to be nft scams they can't really do much new with jet grind radio without hideki naganuma so uh if they're doing if he's making this sega can't really do anything new unless they get a new guy and it's not going to be the same at all yeah i think it would rather so important yeah well a lot of those um a lot of those tracks were licensed tracks like i think rob zombie was in one of the games are you so, serious? I did yeah, not know that. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, yeah, they would probably get a new composer and like a new, someone new to like get the licensed soundtrack stuff. Because that's the way these things are now. If they're going to remake the games, they're just going to do it their way. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick MSGT says, I think the game you're looking for, the I guess the Pacific Islander brawler, is Tunchi. I think that is it. Uh, and I think it's out. uh it's on steam yes this is it it's on switch too yes oh it's on switch already yeah okay yes this game looks so fun what's it uh rated uh, who cares <laughs> like is it is it doing good do people like it uh of course everything's taking forever to load oh, on God. steam where do I see the rating? I'm new to Steam. Everybody help me out. It's Steam Deck Verified. There you go. Oh, and the Hat and Time Girl is in it. Oh, yeah. Where are the reviews? Again, like this is one of those indie games that like it's so small. It might be popular with a dedicated fan base. But it might not be big enough for, you know, major outlets to like actually review it. Eighty-two percent of the three hundred and ninety-four user reviews for this game are positive. There you go. So very positive. Uh, top right, everybody's saying. Oh, mostly positive. Yeah. Uh, recent reviews mostly positive. All reviews very positive. Very pog. All right. Uh, all right, so Tunchi, give it a shot. Is there a yeah. uh, demo? All these freaking games should have a demo. I know. It should be required that games have demos. Maybe Not PlayStation trailers, has the demos. right idea. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, yeah, those are, I guess, the uh, indie games that we're looking forward to coming out on the Switch. Yes. And some of them are apparently already out on Switch. Yeah, some of the ones we were excited for, we can already play. Yeah. Um. What was the one that I said I would play? Uh oh the 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 sound whatever it's called. Yeah. What the hell was that game? 
Uh, I just closed the window. I know I did too. Uh, Soundfall. Yes. I'm going to leave that in a tab. I will try it out later. Maybe I'll stream it another day. Uh, Okay. Who do we got here? What type of notifications do we have? Uh, We have Majin Jameson. Thank you for the seven months. We got Govd. Thank you for the prime and Niankus. Thank you for the 26 months. Yo, you plan on making any other colored desk mats? Possibly. We're almost out of these blue ones. So if you want a blue one, uh, I tie my camera off. Can I do that? If you want one of these nice tealish, bluish desk mats, uh, go to wolfdenapparel.com. Uh, you're almost out of time to get one. One of these guys. And you please make the next round like a darker color, like a black or coffee colored, because I had to stop using the Wolf 10 one because <laughs> I kept spilling coffee on it. You can clean it very easily. Do, do I just put it in the washing machine? Yes. I have to on a cold that. cycle or else it'll melt because it's rubber. Obviously. Obviously. This stupid but. camera uh friggin uh charger stopped working so now i, I can't freaking charge it really yeah stupid thing um but i have i i'm using the uh the 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 charger for the uh uh the xbox like the xbox base stand charger thing like it has the same sort of um, charger so really? i plugged th- i plugged that in and it's still not working so I, don't, I think yeah. maybe the camera just doesn't hold the charge anymore. Uh, and all I did was move it. I moved it to a different spot. Yeah. Whoops. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So if you want a nice white and blue one, buy it right now because we're running out. Uh, make one with printed coffee stains. Not a bad idea. That's, that's a very good idea. Actually. So then you'll never know. Um. All right. What do we got next on the list here? Uh, Inhale your enemies and combine their abilities in Kirby's Adventure Beyond Dreamland. Dozens of puffed up special powers await you. In Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards floating onto Nintendo Switch for a Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack on May 20th. I have never played this game. End of the week. I always forget that this is a Mm side-scroller because... When you put 64 at the end of it, you assume it's a 3D uh, free-roaming game, like Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time. For this game, they said, nope, it will remain a side-scroller. And we'll have to wait until Kirby the Last of Us to get a side-scroller. Is this the reason there's a D-pad on the left side of the N64 controller? No... I think they put a D-pad on there because they felt they needed to put a D-pad on there. Because, <laughs> like, the, I, I think that that's for side-scrollers, and there's just no side-scrollers on the N64, aside from there's, this and, like, Yoshi. Ah, uh, there's one other. I think Mischief Makers is the only other side-scroller. I didn't even know that was a D-pad. side-scroller. Yeah. But, yeah, probably. I don't know. I spell Mischief. I think it's M-I-S, no, I nailed Chief. It. I nailed it. There you go. I don't need you. Uh, people love Mischief Makers. I've never... I'm realizing now I've never seen actual gameplay. Yeah, I've heard it's I've heard it's very good. It looks good. I have no idea what's yeah. happening. I don't know why I just said that. I don't know what this game is. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Of course not. It's an N64 game. All right, now it's making a little more sense. All right, maybe I will try it. Um, what's the chances of that coming to Switch Online? Ah, uh, I it might be high. Who makes? I think Treasure made that game, and they made the Sin and Punishment. That? They made Sin oh, and Punishment and Gunstar Heroes. Oh, very yeah, it does look like Gunstar Heroes. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's pub- uh, developed by Treasure, but published by enix and nintendo oh nintendo published it so there's a very good chance but also enix yeah enix in japan nintendo in north america and pal so there is a chance 
There's a chance. Not a big chance, but there's a chance. Will it come to only America? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's one of those types of games. It's like win back that's low profile enough that Nintendo could easily just take it and put it on Switch Online. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, okay. Well, you got Kirby coming out Friday? Yes. All right. We also have a bit of an update from last week's yes. uh, episode. Yes. We were last week, we were talking about uh, projected sales of the Switch, how things might be winding down, and how it's already the fifth best selling console of all time. Oh, well, within a week, it has now the fourth best selling console of all time. Uh, wow. Nintendo Switch sales momentum in the United States has pushed it past its most significant rival. The hybrid home slash handhelds lifetime sales have now surpassed the PlayStation 4, according to industry tracking firm, the NPD Group. Lifetime sales of the Nintendo Switch have surpassed those of the PlayStation 4, making it the fourth highest unit selling console in U.S. history and the sixth highest selling unit, highest unit selling video game hardware platform overall. Uh, this is a major milestone for the Nintendo system. It puts it behind only a handful of the best-selling home systems of all time. In the console segment, the Switch unit uh, sales only trail the PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, and Wii. Um, as usual, Switch-led hardware units sales in April and continues to outpace the Xbox and PlayStation year-to-year. -year. Xbox Series S and S is the number two console in both periods, while the PlayStation 5 remains a support remains supply constrained. In terms of dollar sales, however, it's PlayStation that came out on top. PS5 led April in hardware dollar sales, trailed closely by Xbox Series and Nintendo Switch. Uh, Xbox Series has genera generated the highest hardware dollars of any platform year to date, followed by PlayStation 5 and then Nintendo Switch. PS5 has the highest average of sales price uh, due to not having... Due to not having a $300 option like the Series S, that uh, that is enabling it to generate more revenue while selling it, its very limited supply of consoles. But overall, hardware saw a surge year over year in April thanks to increased availability. This is likely only a teaser of what's to come as supply is still unlikely to return to sane levels uh, permanently before the end of the year. So... Overall, bottom line, despite the fact that we got fancy new consoles uh, out, Switch is doing great. Switch is now the fourth best-selling console of all time. Yeah, so uh, what's different than what we talked about last year? I think we we knew all this. Well, last I week mean, we last, talked last about... Week, yeah. Last week we talked about things possibly slowing down and its right. momentum But we uh, talked about how it was, out. We talked about how it was the fourth best-selling console of all time. It just, we talked about just, how it was the fifth. Oh, we now talked it's, about how it's like, already the fourth. Now, now? it's yes. Oh. We said we said it might take a while before it uh, supplants the PlayStation Four, but it took a week. Wow. Okay. Never mind yeah. then. Damn. I mean, we also talked about how uh, things are. Nintendo says things are petering out. This year is not going to be as big as it was last year, but. The Nintendo Switch is still knocking it out of the park, despite all of that. Right. Despite the sales right. trickling down. I mean, that to me just confirms that, you know, while yes, things might be slowing down for the Switch, uh, their statement that things are slowing down was basically to just be conservative and place a safe bet. You know, not to put their profit projections too high and risk disappointment, you know? Right. So... Yeah, I I uh, found this tweet from uh, Deek Tweak, uh, which is a graph of Nintendo's historical earnings. It's a little confusing, uh, but don't mm -hmm. really pay attention to the uh, green and and and. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess pay attention to the green and uh, yellow. I mean, that's what my eye was drawn to immediately. And it looks like Nintendo has been doing basically the same, except for the Wii U era. <laughs> yeah. um, but the green and the yellow are operating profit ratio and operating profit. Oh, they're both operating profit ratio. Oh, no, operating one's, profit one's operating... ratio, ordinary profit ratio, which I think is a percentage, which is why it's 
about the same the whole time. Yeah. Uh, but the graph at the bottom, the bar graphs, that shows how much Nintendo has grown since the 80s. Um, and the huge peak in the Wii era and the huge decline <laughs> in the Wii U era. And that also, the operating yeah. profit ratio and ordinary profit ratio also took a huge hit uh, yeah. in, in that area. Uh, but now we're back up to higher than Nintendo's ever been. Uh, what it's is insane. this one? This one uh, where it's forty one point six percent. What is yeah. what, what? That's two thousand one. Is that GameCube? Uh, yeah, that's GameCube. That's weird because I thought the GameCube was a failure, but it's it. The ordinary profit ratio is as high as it is now, which is the highest. Well, the GameCube was not was the only console at the time that was not sold at a loss. So uh-huh. they might like. Initially, they might have uh, had a really high profit margin, but over time, you know, that decreased rapidly as people weren't buying GameCubes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to note that I am updating my RG552 right now, uh, and it requires me to hit, yes, I'd like to run this as administrator. It requires me to do that like a thousand times. So the stream <laughs> might look weird every now and then because I'm literally hitting the little run as administrator thing every five seconds. Um, also, it fails all the time, so I have to do it over and over again. It sucks, but whatever. Um, Ari Joel says maybe because they sold Rare. Is that when they sold Rare in 2001? It's around that time, yeah. That would have made them a lot of money. Because yeah. the operating profit ratio is about the same, but the ordinary profit ratio is skyrocketed. Yeah. So that might make a little bit of sense. Um, also, 2009 highest net sales. Oh, yeah, that's because of the Wii. Yeah, that's the Wii. That makes a lot of sense. That was like peak Wii. So everything's pointing to Nintendo doing the best that, that or, or about they're, they're on the trajectory to do the best that they've ever done, yeah. um, which means they're going to buy Microsoft next. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, and then we also have another article, uh, Switch 2. Yes. Yes. Nintendo is working on not making the same mistakes it did with the Wii U. Good luck. Uh, Nintendo... Hey, Nintendo won't be uh, drawn on. Nintendo won't be drawn on when it will release a successor to the Switch. But President Shintaro Furukawa has made it clear that the company aims to not repeat the same mistakes as it did when moving from Wii to Wii U and from DS to 3DS. In the company's latest financial briefings Q and A, an attendee asked Furukawa how Nintendo aimed to move on from the Switch smoothly when it chooses to release its next generation hardware. While Furukawa didn't directly acknowledge new hardware or when it might arrive, the, uh, he pointed out that the company is aiming to learn from its past mistakes. Looking back on past experiences of generational change, such as the change from Wii and DS eras, we recognize that one of our tasks is ensuring the transition to future generations of hardware is as smooth as possible, he said. Uh, Nintendo saw enormous success with the Wii and DS, the latter of which remains its best-selling hardware of all time, but their successors, Wii U and 3DS, both suffered rocky launches. Uh, while 3DS recovered to some extent, the Wii U became one of Nintendo's most, notor- most notable failures, with production ending just five years after launch. Uh, much of the problem for both machines were their similarities to their predecessors, with many customers unclear on what, the, what had been upgraded and whether they needed the new hardware. Switch, which has combined Nintendo's home and hardware and handheld hardware businesses, is still going strong in its fifth year on sale, but Nintendo is clearly thinking about how to bring a large portion of its 100 million owners uh, with it to the next generation. It aims to... The aim appears to be to get Nintendo fans to connect with Nintendo in more places than simply their Switch. We are focusing on building long-term relationships with our uh, consumers through Nintendo accounts, uh, and while continuing to release new Switch software for consumers to enjoy, we aim to maintain relationships across hardware generations through services that utilize Nintendo accounts and by providing opportunities for them to experience our IPs through other non-gaming channels. Let's go. As for when, 
As for when Nintendo will release a new console, that remains hazy. Uh, rumors have swirled for over a year about the existence of an upgraded Switch model, which has been dubbed Switch Pro, but Nintendo has, re- has repeatedly denied them. Yo, okay, so... Yes. I was. T- did I talk about this last week? Uh, Freaking... Uh, we talk about this a lot. <laughs> how Nintendo has a terrible account system? Yes. Um... I have a major concern that the next Switch is going to be uh that, that Nintendo is is on the trajectory to have a banger and then a fail and then a banger and a fail. So yeah. the next one uh if we're going by history the next one is uh pretty much guaranteed to be a massive failure. <laughs> yeah. But uh nintendo has an opportunity to not go down that route if they just don't put a fucking stupid gimmick in it we got we yeah. listen we're f- you figured it out with the switch it's all we need is an upgraded switch you don't gotta go crazy yeah. you don't gotta freaking put uh 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 you don't gotta rely nope, too nope. heavily on the motion stuff you don't yeah. gotta put no a free yeah please for the love of god don't put 3d in the stupid thing um we don't need that stuff we just need it to be a good Game, uh, a portable home console hybrid, and that's it. Yeah, just do that. Just make it, be, it up, yeah. make it a little better. L- that's it. Literally make the switch too. Yes, that's it. Bigger but, screen, better processor, better battery life, maybe more comfortable Joy Cons to hold. But that's yeah. it. Uh, this is what like the the Nintendo podcast is mostly about. That's going out this week. It's that. <laughs> it's we just talk about that for like an hour. Um. But what I found recently after playing the Steam Deck, which I might have talked about last week, um, the Switch doesn't need to switch. It doesn't need to, like, (laughs) actually physically switch between being a portable or a home console. They just need a better account system. And then... I'll be able to switch between my home console and my portable console. Like I can have so, a switch light style thing and a home console style thing. And as long as the account system is good, I can switch between the two seamlessly, which is what the steam deck does. I can play it on my computer, just like it's a switch. And then when I'm ready to go, I just pick up my Steam Deck and everything's there already. So it doesn't physically so, switch. I just have my account on both uh, uh, systems. So essentially what Game Pass is doing yes. right now. With the ability yes. to play, on, but not cloud-based. Actually physically having the game on the hard drive. Yeah, well, like, not... Yeah, like 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 what Microsoft has been doing. Yeah, I can play yes. my. It picks up my freaking save file for Halo across every platform that I have, and it's it's yeah. amazing and it's instant. So Nintendo just needs a better account system. It does not need to rely so heavily on the physical switching stuff. Just just have a right. good account system, and and it'll be worth the upgrade for everybody. Well, the you know the the switching is the gimmick. You know, mm-hmm. but I think also too the the actually physically seeing it go into the dock and then showing up on the TV, like that's a very simple thing for people to wrap their head around. It's much right. simpler than like making sure all your accounts are synced, uh, making sure you have the, all the right devices and stuff. You know, you just put it in the dock and there it is on the TV. Right. I get the benefit of having you know the the Steam style setup. But Nintendo is all about making things as simple as possible and just putting it in the dock is as simple as it gets. Right. Uh, Yeah, I'm not opposed to the switching situation. I just think that uh, there's a really huge missed opportunity with that account system. Also, I'm very happy uh, that Furukawa is talking about... uh, 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 it seems like he's talking about cross generation stuff. Like, like I'll be able yes. to bring all of my uh, Switch games onto this new platform because I have a fuck yeah. ton of Switch games. So yeah. being able to carry all of those to a Switch Two sounds awesome. Yeah, we are we are long past the point of you know every uh, video game generations are clean breaks. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Xbox and even Sony have shown that like bringing your stuff with you via an account like goes a long way and not having that is beyond archaic. So 
it, yeah it, Ninten- it makes all the sense in the world to include that Nintendo has been pretty good with their portable consoles of of backwards compatibility. They they usually have a, right. a a cartridge port of the previous generation console in there, but mm-hmm. never for digital stuff. Never for digital yes. downloads. The digital downloads yes. are usually a clean clean break, which shouldn't happen anymore these days. Yeah. Having that sort of backwards compi- compatibility isn't a technical hurdle anymore. It should just work just like it does on every other fucking platform that's not true playstation needs some help with that too but uh there's no reason they're why, trying yeah there's no reason why my uh you know virtual console games or my uh the ds or 3ds games shouldn't be on this stupid thing there's no yeah. reason for that the screens are weird so what emulators have figured that out for years we, we should be able yeah. to have all of our old games from our old nintendo accounts on whatever new platform there there is mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway uh i was a bullfrog says oh god i'm gonna have to transfer my micro sd saves again 500 gigabytes uh saves or the games because that's a lot for saves yeah. because and saves are a completely different story yeah, because not every save transfers to the cloud. The saves mm-hmm. are stored to the switch itself. Um, that's something they really need to fix. Yeah, before the next switch. It's very stupid. Yeah. Um, it's also stupid that you can't just plug the micro SD card into another switch and just have it work. Like, I understand yeah. it's got to be linked to an account, but just link it to the account. Then, if my account's on both yeah. switches, then it should just work. It's dumb. On a Steam Deck, yeah. you can swap micro SD cards, no problem. Just pop them in and out. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. That's it for the future of Nintendo. Now let's talk about yes, the future well, of Alan Wake. <laughs> which is going to be on Nintendo. Uh, Whoa. So I'll, I'll just summarize it. Cause, uh, so last week, Remedy had a, had a little... Sh- uh, video uh live stream in celebration of the 12 year anniversary of alan wake um it was a very bad and very awkward video uh (laughs) very poorly put together uh the video basically opened with sam lake the creative director at remedy uh and the the physical actor of alan wake the guy who actually portrays him in the game playing alan wake on switch and they confirmed very awkwardly that Alan Wake is the Alan Wake remaster is coming to Nintendo Switch later this year. Uh, in addition to that, they confirm that an Alan Wake TV show is in the works at AMC. Oh, that's it. That's all they said about it. Very interesting. Yes. Um, but I think it's very cool that Alan Wake remaster is coming to switch. It'll be a digital only release. Uh, but Remedy did confirm that it won't be a streaming title. It will be oh. download to the hardware. Yeah, so it's unlike Control was streaming, this won't be. So this is a remaster. Yes. But it, you know, it's essentially going to be the same game as it was on the Xbox 360. Which is good, because that game was great. It, the footage that they showed looks like a remake. It looks incredible. Did you skip to the end? Because that's... Yeah. They're showing that's Alan Wake 2. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. I didn't know they were making that. So that we, makes dude, sense. We were, it was it was revealed at the game awards. You live streamed it. Do you think I remember that? All I think about when I see this guy is hey, there's Max Payne. That's <laughs> true. Um Yeah, well at the end of the at the end of this, they said we're still working on Alan Wake 2, we have nothing to show. So then I'm not that interested that this is coming out on the Switch. Like, it's just, it's a freaking Xbox 360 game. <laughs> right. It's probably going to look but exactly that- like it did on the Xbox 360. Probably, yeah. Um, of course that'll run good on the Switch. Yeah. This was a very, very awkwardly done Oh my show. god. I don't know if you... It's running at yeah. like four frames a second. I don't know if you saw, like... In the in the background of the shot with like uh, Sam Lake and uh, the guy who plays Alan Wake, in the background is the computer screen, 
And that's where the guy who does the voice for Alan Wake was Skyping into. And oh. nobody looks at him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, all like a lot of awkward pauses. A lot Like when they revealed him playing it on Switch, he goes, oh, this is Alan Wake on Switch. We weren't supposed to show that just yet, but it's coming. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. But I'm pretty sure this is also a Switch dev kit. Is it? I thought it was just a Switch Lite. Uh, yeah, oh, it's a Switch Lite dev kit. They look just like Switch Lights. It's, they're just gray. Ah. I just, unless this is either just a gray Switch Lite, which who would buy that, or it's a dev kit. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> In development build. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Uh, I, I think the only difference is it has twice as much RAM. That's the only difference with the okay, Switch Lite yeah. dev kit. Dev kits are usually like are a lot more powerful than final hardware, retail yeah. hardware. Uh, so that's it. This is a quick one. I just want to, I mean, I wanted to throw it in because, I, you know, Alan Wake is coming to Switch, which is cool. I bet maybe I'll buy it on that and replay it. But also, I just wanted to show off how awkward this fucking thing was. <laughs> it was like, I'll have to watch it, it sad. later. It was, we it have was a whole, sad. whole video about Alan Wake on youtube.com slash Wolfden. Yes, part of our acclaim series, The Backlog. Yes. You can just Google Wolfden Allen Wake and probably find it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we also have some news about Bethesda and uh, yes. star, their, their acclaimed Starfield. <laughs> Beth Bethesda Softworks has delayed Starfield, its highly anticipated sci-fi RPG, and Redfall, Arcane Studios' vampire-themed shooter, both to the first half of 2023. The company said Thursday morning both games were, were expected to launch this year. In a statement on Twitter, the Microsoft-owned publisher said the teams at Arcane Austin for Redfall and Bethesda Game Studios for Starfield have incredible ambition for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. Uh, Bethesda promised to share the first deep dive on both games soon, indicating both will still make an appearance at the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase on June 12th. Starfield is an epic sci-fi RPG from the makers of the Elder Scrolls series, and the first major release from the core Bethesda Game Studios team since 2015's Fallout 4, and the first new property from the studio in 25 years. Whoa. Redfall is an open-world co-op shooter, uh, in the Left 4 Dead style, and its development at Arcane's Austin branch is being led by Dishonored creative director Harvey Smith. Both games have a great uh, pedigree, uh, and both are very significant to Bethesda's new owner, Microsoft, as they are due to be the first Bethesda titles to be console exclusive to Xbox. Uh, 2021's Deathloop and this year's Ghostwire Tokyo both launched on PlayStation first, despite being released after the Microsoft acquisition due to pre-existing agreements. Starfield and Redfall will also launch on PC and on day one, Xbox Game Pass. Uh, oh yeah, it's because it's a Microsoft owned studio now. Yes. So this is actually a very big deal, especially with uh, Starfield because last year when they revealed it, they announced the date. It was going to be this like November 11th this year. Did anybody believe them when they said that? I think everybody believed them. <laughs> they've been, been so quiet on it. There's still been no been gameplay so... shown. Yeah. Uh, but but see, I mean, like, it's just going to be uh, it's going to be Skyrim in space. What what do you expect? True. I mean, it looks good. I'm glad that they're doing yeah. something different with their IP. Um I I'd be more interested in this than I would be with the new Elder Scrolls. Uh, yeah. I'm not super into those types of games. Uh, but I did play... I, I Look, I played Fallout 3 and I did not like it. I got really far in it for some reason, but I did not like it. Uh, I played a little bit of Fallout 4. I wasn't into it. Uh, I played a decent amount of Skyrim, to be honest. I didn't think I would like that, but I actually kind of liked it. It was actually pretty good. Uh, and I played it way after it came out. Um, yeah. I might play a little bit of Starfield, but it's going to be a long time till this thing comes out. And and yeah. we don't really know anything about it. We just see some scenery, uh, and that's it. It's a yeah. concept art. The concept art looks great. Um, but I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even think tw first half of 2023 is going to happen. I think they're going to delay it more oh, than no. that because this has to be a really big title. It has to be huge because it's, it's – Well, they've been working on it for how long? Like this is this has been in development for years. Yeah. So I'd imagine like they must be 
approaching some sort of finish line. I, you know, I, I, it's it's there. Bethesda is in dangerous cyberpunk territory. They 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 have to make a really big game, like huge RPG, and there's a possibility it could be broken when it comes out, just like Fallout seventy six was. Uh, and they don't. It, they can't have something like that happen. So it's funny you say that because I didn't put it here, but there was an article talking about it where one of the reasons why they delayed it. Is because they didn't want it to turn out like cyberpunk. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They wanted That's to. What I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now Redfall is that weird game that looked like uh, uh, Dishonored that well, I had zero interest it's, in. <laughs> it's Left for Dead with vampires, right? Made by it's literally the people who made is. Dishonored. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. I don't. I mean, whatever. I I don't know how much. I, I'm sure that's going to be fine. That I, I'm not too yeah. worried about that. Um, but Starfield, I'm a little worried about. I hope they don't rush yeah. that out. And I don't think Microsoft would make them rush that out. I think that they'd be totally fine. No. Uh, Phil Spencer tweeted in response: These decisions are hard on teams making the games and our fans. While I fully support giving teams time to release these great games. Uh, when they are ready, we hear the feedback. Delivering quality and consistency is expected. We will continue to work to better meet those expectations. I think he was basically talking about a lot of people were upset that they were told that Starfield was going to launch this year in November, and now it's not. Mm -hmm. And he's basically saying, in the nicest way possible, what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Again, Making I games is hard. What do you want from me? It's gonna be good, but it's gonna take a while to get there. I don't. I don't even think they're gonna hit first half twenty twenty three. Um, yeah. but hopefully we'll see more soon because we still don't even know anything about this freaking game. Well, it, both of those games are gonna be showing off at the Xbox and Bethesda showcase this year, so maybe and we'll see some games game fest. Play. Yeah, or whatever okay. it is. Okay. Oh, sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, best of luck to Bethesda, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and next. where's that Indiana Jones game you were working on, buddy? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen anything about that. No. They've got a lot going on. They got a lot of balls to juggle, a lot of plates yeah. in the air. Uh, Kelv, thank you for the three months. I appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about our best friends in the in the retro gaming industry. Oh boy, class a class action lawsuit filed against Game uh, Greater Wada for shady business practices. The uh, retro game market has exploded in recent years with auction prices for vintage games reaching record highs. Part of that could be attributed to companies like Wada Games, who grade games sent to them by customers, determining their quality and value. Now, customers Jacob Knight, Jack Cribs, and Jason uh, Dose, nailed it, uh, have filed a class action lawsuit against Wada Games in the state of California. According to the report, Wada Games is being accused of not sending games back in a timely manner, and much worse, artificially inflating the prices of games. Uh, in just a few years, the reported prices of some of these games have increased dramatically. They reported a copy of the original Super Mario Brothers for NES would sell for $30,000 uh, $30, in 2017, while the same game had a reported value of $2 million in 2021. The involvement of company representatives in some of these auctions, along with a suspicious appearance on the TV show Pawn Stars, have <laughs> brought claims like these into question. Kotaku has a full write-up of the incident with more details on the history and practices of this company. Uh, this is certainly an issue that affects anyone involved with buying, selling, or collecting these classic games. If you've been a customer of WADA games in the past, there's a chance you could have a stake in this lawsuit. Uh, of course, it will be months or years before a decision is made. Until then, it's worth being aware of the situation and being very careful when looking into buying retro games or having your own graded. For more details, you can read the lawsuit filed in a tweet shared by Pat the NAS Punk down below. Uh, and yeah, yeah. How, so who who's involved in the in like like how do you get involved in the class action lawsuit? Do you have to have been wronged by WADA? Yes. Like, like gotten something graded and had it be like not the right grade or, or purchased you, you something set, or what? Uh, 
I think essentially if you had sent something to WADA to be graded and they didn't give you back give it to you back in time, uh, or right. if you if you tried to buy something from WADA and they were selling it to you at a at an uncontrollable price. So so I was I remember reading up on this now. Um uh I remember when this the, the the I remember when the lawsuit was I guess being drafted I don't remember somebody posted yeah. on a subreddit the guy who was drafting it posted it on a subreddit somewhere and the main yeah. thing that they were going after Wada for was not getting the uh, game back in the timely matter that they that Wada says that you would get it back in uh, they mm-hmm. guarantee the game back within a certain amount of time and apparently they were, weren't hitting that which I think they were doing because that was the easiest thing to get them for but uh it seems like kind of one of those things where al capone's going to jail for tax evasion <laughs> like yeah. there's much greater things that wada should be reprimanded for but they're trying to get them on just anything they could get them on um so i mean can't you isn't there some sort of violation for market manipulation like isn't there something like because they, they're they basically fucking money well, laundering yes if they can prove that they were money laundering and you know basically if they can prove that this is a scam right then yeah then they then that's like much worse because that's what that's what we need yeah um yeah i i mean a lot of uh, memorabilia and stuff apparently has been getting inflated b- since the pandemic. I guess people got stimulus mm-hmm. checks and wanted to buy freaking all th- this yeah. like collectible stuff. Um, but WADA has been straight up just falsely grading things and buying their own shit to make it look yeah. like things are worth more than they are. Uh, and they've this we we learned in the we we had a whole episode about it um they're in bed with heritage auctions which is the auction house that yes. that buys and or that sells a lot of this stuff and they buy their own shit so that it inflates the price yeah. and they've done it before with comic books yeah with comic and coins art, coin with coins, coins uh collectors coins was the big one in the 80s yeah baseball cards everything so uh yeah. they should be in jail Yes. Um, I also want to note that this happened to me the other day. I wanted to buy Wii Sports because uh, I figured it was like three bucks because it's Wii Sports. Everybody yeah. has a copy of Wii Sports. Um, and it's $40 from JNL Game in the city. What? And this is, a, this is a printed cover, Will. Don't tell me this is the player's choice one. It's a printed case. What the f- <laughs> They printed out the player's choice case. It's not even a real player's choice case. Hold on. Hold on Nintendo Selects. I'm sorry. Same thing. Uh, and then Wii Sports Resort, also $40, by the way. And that I looked it up on can't... eBay. Honestly, it's still 25 to 40 bucks for a copy of Wii Sports. Wii Sports was a Nintendo Selects title. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was included in every way. I know. It's very weird. It's very weird. Oh, my God. But there's no guarantee this was a Nintendo Selects version of Wii Sports. This could just be True. Wii Sports. And this was the only printed case. Because it's the only case. Like, Wii Sports came in a little yeah. sleeve. So if they got a copy of Wii Sports traded in, they're just going to print the Nintendo Selects cover because it's the only full cover you can get. Um, yeah but i decided no thanks i'll just wait till i go home to get our wii sports <laughs> i was gonna say i but, can get it from my in-laws have a wii i can get it from them but i do need wii sports resort for a for a project okay do we have a copy of anywhere yeah, i accessible? don't think we do okay no well, i gotta fucking pay 40 dollars for wii sports resort jesus christ um Anyway, uh, so yeah, no, the the market's inflated. It's partly COVID's fault. It's a lot of Wada's fault. 
So I'm mad yes, because I couldn't absolutely. just go to the mm-hmm. store and pick up uh, Wii Sports when I wanted to because it's $40 and I have it at home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Uh, KJAX says the Wii Mini came with Mario Kart. Looks like it may not have come with Wii Sports possibly. I don't know, honestly. Oh, maybe you're right. The, the, the red and black one? Yeah, I, that, I don't know if that even came with a game. I have to think of it. There's also a Japanese Wii Sports that uh, had a box, like a full cover box. So I don't know what the really? deal was with that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyway, that's that's your weekly update on why WADA sucks. Yeah. Don't uh, Don't buy from them. Don't send your games to them. Yeah. Uh, we got more news like, uh, the yes. launch lineup for the PlayStation plus, what is this called? What do we call this? The, the new PlayStation plus games lineup has been revealed. Isn't it not called PlayStation plus? No, it's still called PlayStation plus, but there's three tiers. There's essential pre- premium and extra. So do I get this in my essentials or are you going to explain everything to me right now? I'm I'm gonna have to explain this all to you all over again. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Essentials. Oh my PlayStation, god. Okay. PlayStation Plus Essentials is exactly what PlayStation Plus is now. You mm-hmm. get you know the two free games a month, and that's it. PlayStation Plus uh, Premium gives you access to like a collection of games and. Uh, what was it? Yeah, a collection of 56 PS4 and PS5 games in the uh, PlayStation Premium tier and PlayStation Extras tier. The Premium tier gets those games and uh, a collection of retro titles. So anything from the PS3 back. You follow? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm listening. Okay. So, if you scroll down, there's the list of the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium Tier games. These are basically the games you get for free uh, with your subscription to either so, Plus Extra or Plus Premium. So, the Essentials is missing a big library of on-demand stuff. Correct. Remember, the Essentials, PlayStation Plus Essentials, is what PlayStation Plus currently is. Mm-hmm. So, if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus, that's what you're getting. Okay, I'm trans- following. Transfers over. Yes. Okay. So the games included in Plus and Premium and Extra and Premium are some pretty big deal games. You got Celeste, you got Bloodborne, you got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dead Cells, Days Gone, Control, um, City Skylines, Demon Souls, the PS5 Demon Souls. We're not. We're not uh, reading this whole list. There's a billion no, games right here. <laughs> but I'm just saying. It's a lot of big name stuff. Death Stranding, both versions. God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Spider Man, and Miles Morales are included. Uh, the Resident Evil remake, Red Dead Redemption Two, Tearaway Unfolded, the complete Uncharted series, um, the The Last of Us, and uh, The Last of Us Left Behind. Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of good games here. So so it, it, it's now, base, it's basically exactly like their version of Game Pass. Yes. Now, the premium tier also gets the oh, classic titles. Serious. PS PS1, PS2, and PS3, and even PSP and Vita games. As of now, they have announced no PlayStation 2 games <laughs> in this collection. The, the PlayStation 2 games they have announced... Or the PlayStation 3 games that they've announced are the PS4 ports of those games. So, uh, Ape Escape, it's the original PlayStation version. But, Bioshock is the PS4 version, not the PS3 version. Uh, Dark Cloud is not the PS2 version, it's the PS4 version. Uh, Jack Jack 3, Jack and Daxter, the Jack and Daxter series, not the PS2 version, the PS4 version. So, it's not as 
it, it's what they're advertising, but it's not what they're advertising in a, in a sense. Does that make sense? Uh, what do you mean? It's, what, how is it not what they're advertising? So the, when they announced this, they said uh, PlayStation Plus Premium, you will have access to PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 games. Uh-huh. So they're giving, so for PS2 and PS3, they're giving you those games, but they're not giving you the PS2 and PS3 versions of those games. So for example, Bioshock, that's a PlayStation 3 game. You are not getting the PlayStation 3 version of Bioshock in the premium tier. You are getting Bioshock remastered from the PS4 instead. Oh, okay. That's fine. Is What's it wrong? though? Wait, but what? Because uh, how how is that not what they said? How is that different than what they said? Because be when you, because when you say they're, they're you're getting PS2 and PS3 games, you expect them to be the PS2 and PS3 versions of those games. Well, they have PS3 the games. They also they have, have PS3, PS3 games. Did You're they just announce not any PS3 games? You scroll down more, there's PS3 games. They just didn't announce PS2 games, it looks like. And there's, I think, yeah. one PSP game announced, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, you're not going to get Bioshock for PS3. You're going to get the PS4 remastered, oh. whatever the hell. But, I mean... Oh, I did miss this. Yeah, I mean, that's not... This isn't, like, the well, end of the world, I don't think. It should be noted that these PS, the PS3 games you are getting, which I should have scrolled down further and saw, um, Azur, Azura's Wrath, The Devil May Cry HD Collection, Infamous and Infamous 2, yada, yada, yada. Uh, these are streaming. Yeah, they're cloud These are cloud-based games. Right. Because Sony will not spend the time and money to do native uh, PlayStation 3 emulation on PS5. Which so they can easily do. So PlayStation 3 emulation is hard. But uh, mm -hmm. we've gotten pretty close to it. So yes, uh, just put a team on it, dude. Uh, you're going to make a lot of money with this with this service. Just yeah. put a friggin' team on it. Uh, so that it makes sense why they would rather have uh, games that are remastered for PS4. It makes a lot more sense to put the remaster than to have to do a cloud version. Well, maybe, but you have certain games like uh, Silent Hill... Silent Hill 2 and 3, where the HD collection of that, the PS3 version of that, is notoriously broken. And if that's the only version that's available to play, people are not going to want the service then. They're going to mm -hmm. track down their PS2 copies of those games and try to play it that way. Right. So, I understand the appeal of having like the remaster or the remake up there. I get it. I'm not opposed to it. But if you're trying to showcase your grand history and if you're advertising PS2, PS3 games, I I don't see why you would not include those versions of those games in your service. This, this has the potential to give uh, Microsoft a run for their money with the, with the whole Game Pass situation, uh, yeah. which is something I was not expecting from PlayStation. However... Uh, the biggest wait and see here is how well are these games going to run and then you got the cloud versions of certain games and stuff like yeah. with Game Pass it's pretty much good to go everything you get everything you get is a great version of that game there's a lot of games that are optimized there's a lot of Xbox 360 games that are optimized for Xbox Series yeah. X which is crazy like Red Dead Redemption freaking Sonic there's Sonic, Sonic games. Generations yeah that run like 4k 60 frames and shit so uh yeah. there's potential this could come out and then the people who know better will be like hey these are running like shit the cloud versions are stupid blah 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 and they could give yeah. a bad rep to to this 120 dollar service uh, absolutely but the mainstream is gonna see hey playstation hey fucking 400 games on my playstation for a netflix service like a Netflix price, I'm down, baby. Because like the yeah. mainstream doesn't have Game Pass, you know, they haven't seen that yet. They haven't gotten there. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of potential here, but there's also potential for uh, the uh, the I guess narrative to be flipped 
by people who know better, just like Stadia, where yeah. people are like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> you said 4K 120 or 4K 60, and I'm only seeing 1080p. This service sucks. And then everybody turned on, on Stadia. I mean, that was not the only reason people turned on Stadia. That was like Stadia the biggest had a lot of thing everybody was saying about that stupid service. Was it? Or was it the fact that they said that you could play your games anywhere and everywhere? And when it launched, you're like, you can play your games anywhere and everywhere so long as you just use this hockey puck attached to your TV and a Chrome browser. Can't you, play on your phones. Can't can't download an app to your Apple TV No, or you could play can't, it on your computer through the Chrome browser. It was awesome. Yeah, but they were advertising it as more than that. They should have waited. And it never became more than that. They should have waited. They, they launched it with, yeah. where you had to spend $120 and then also buy the game. That was stupid. Yeah. That was dumb. They should have waited for sure. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of potential with this. There's also a little bit of potential where uh, it could come out and people uh, like it less than Game Pass. Yeah. But I th I've seen a lot of great games here. So I think there's a lot of yeah no there's no doubt great. there's a lot of great games a lot of like high profile games that they're just giving away to an extent to an extent I just feel like messaging could be a little clearer of uh, the structure of, of who gets what could be better because they're essentially charging you for backwards compatibility mm -hmm. which is something the Xbox gives you for free well um it's still. Well, yeah, okay. So Xbox yeah. gives you, if you buy the game, like you get the backwards compatibility right. because it's just on your account. Right. But the highest tier of this is, I th did we calculate that it's still cheaper than Game Pass? The highest tier? I think we did, yeah. Yeah. So so somebody in the chat was asking what the, what the tiers were. There's, I think, just the regular Essentials is $60, just like PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Essentials is literally the same thing. So then you have uh, uh, Extra, which is $100, which is the PS4 mm -hmm. and PS5 games. And then you have uh, Premium, which is all of the classic catalog, uh, which is $120. Yeah. Uh, so most people, I think, are just going to get the Essentials, which is way cheaper than Game Pass. Uh, yeah. But if you want the retro stuff, uh, the Premium looks great, except for that cloud stuff. Yeah. The cloud's weird, but hopefully they'll fix that in the future and we're gonna get some ps2 games we just don't know where the hell they are yeah <laughs> all i care about is metal gear and burnout that's all i care about i'm mm. gonna get this and i'm never gonna use it <laughs> that's what's gonna happen yeah uh that's why right. i haven't signed up for game pass because i don't know when i'm ever gonna use it uh speaking of game pass Yes. Uh, Microsoft. Um, Microsoft. Yeah, go ahead. Please, please. Has applied for a patent that, while not a perfect solution for every gripe you may have with modern consoles and digital ownership, uh, may nevertheless be a great step forward for anyone who has a catalog of games they own on desk but have bought or are thinking of buying a digital-only console. The patent first while you spotted read this, by... I gotta uh, pee. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. The patent... First spotted by Game Rant is called Software Ownership Validation of Optic Dro of Optic Discs Using Secondary Device. Uh, before he comes back, I just want to say I love when I read something and I have to repeat it to him at the end of the article. Can't wait to do it this time. Uh, while it goes into a lot of detail about why it's being applied for and how it works, it basically boils down to users being able to insert a disc into a console that has both a disk drive and an internet connection and using that internet connection to validate the user's ownership of the disc, then allowing the same user to download the digital version of the game uh, on a second digital only console for free. Uh, and then it goes into Microsoft's pitch for the application, uh, which recognizes the feel of handling a physical game media and or nostalgia associated with physical games media of uh, it goes into it like it, it just basically goes into detail on it with flowery language uh it would work like this to address such challenges with playing previous generation physical game media on next generation digital games devices the present disclosed describes a system and method uh, for providing system uh, software ownership validation of optical discs with secondary devices uh basically what i said before if you want if you want to buy a series s 
and you have a disc-based game from Xbox One, you put the game in the Xbox One, have it update your account, and then go on your Xbox Series S and download it uh, to your Series S uh, for free. Which would be great, because, you know, you, you buy a Blu-ray and it comes with a digital copy of the movie. You know, I understand that. You know, I don't understand why games are so hesitant to follow suit in that. Uh, physical media, such as an optical disc, may be inserted into the optical drive of a second device. The second device may be authorized to access electronic content, such as video game content, on the physical media. The second device may also be configured with a selectable setting or option that enables the second device to validate the ownership of the electronic content of the physical media. So yeah, I kind of hope this happens because... I'm looking at a Series S. I'm not going to lie. I, it would be a nice gateway into next gen for me because I got to play Gotham Knights somehow, some way. Like, obviously, I'm going to play that game. I'm very disappointed it's not coming to Xbox One or PS4. And an Xbox at Series S would be a great entryway for me into next gen. Problem is, I do have a lot of physical games from original Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One that I would no longer be able to play. I would have to keep my Xbox One hooked up in addition to my Series S, which I don't really want to do. And he's back. I read through the article while I was peeing. So I pissed everyone. Oh, good. So I don't have to repeat everything to you. Um, so it seems like their whole thing is you put the the disc into whatever console you have that has a disc drive and then you yes. can play it on the modern console that doesn't have a disc yeah. drive it so, will authenticate it in your account and you can download it to your series s and no additional charge do you have to leave it in that console to play it uh does not say that's uh, there. That's my one question, and my other question is: Can I put a Series X game in an Xbox One and play it on oh. my Series hmm. X or S or whatever? That would be interesting. I have a lot of questions about this. Where yeah. was this published? This talk? This conversation? Uh, oh, it's a, oh, it's a patent. It's, it's a patent. It's a patent uh, first spotted by Game Rant. It's called the Software Ownership Validation of Optical Discs Using Secondary Device. Okay, so it's not and a that thing is, yet. No, it's just a patent. So maybe they're working on it. Yeah, it, it, it could be nothing, but it's a very good yeah. idea. Uh, yeah. This is something that uh, game companies have been uh, profiting off of for a long time you need to buy the game again. So they're making yes. money off of it. Why would they fix the system? Because it's just making yes. them money. But I Microsoft, said while you were out, Microsoft doesn't seem to give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I said while you were out, you know, if you buy a Blu-ray of a movie, it comes with a code for a digital copy of the movie. Right. So I don't understand why Hollywood, which is greedy in its own sense, could just give you a free movie if, as long as you ha you buy the movie. Mm -hmm. They'll give you another version of the movie. You buy a game, you have to buy the game again if you want another version of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that's a thing. I mean, like, I guess people share, people do share that code, like that digital code. Um, yeah. And I guess people would do that with games too. But why? Who cares? You know, what's the big deal? I know. Maybe piracy with movies is worse. I mean, it's certainly easier. That's true. Um, I think that Microsoft is out here like being Robin Hood. They're doing like things that might... I mean, I think they just see that uh, these things that might hurt them in the short term are really good for them in the long term. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's really good for their public image. It makes uh, gamers want to use their stuff more if they just make it easier for us to play games on their consoles. Uh, yeah, they're not going to make as much money initially because of uh, 
people just not needing to download the same game twice but uh it's it's gonna make people want to get in their ecosystem and buy more stuff from them because uh it's just gonna be easier for us in the long term and i hope that it sways uh playstation and nintendo to do similar stuff i mean it sounds like nintendo's gonna start getting on the train of you know yeah an, an actual account system so that's good yeah and maybe you know in 2047 they'll hop on this initiative as well lj in the chat says they're playing from the underdog you take chances like this when you're the underdog that's kind of true true although i don't know i feel like microsoft like xbox is not the underdog anymore because series x and s are selling so well i i, I would and game say, pass is like so successful for them i was gonna say they might not be the underdog because they're also pc and pc is the biggest yeah. console that exists outside well, of mobile gaming <laughs> i feel like with pc gaming most pc gamers associate that with steam yeah but it doesn't not necessarily my it doesn't matter. They're still on Microsoft's platform. True. So they still win. Even if you're playing on Epic Games, on Steam, on the, on the well, you can't say uh, the, the Activision launcher because that's still Microsoft now. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're on Microsoft if you're doing that. And if they're not going to get you, if they're not going to get you with your Halo download on, on the Microsoft store... They're going to get you with that fucking OneDrive subscription that pops up in the bottom right corner every time you're trying to launch a game. So uh, no matter what, they got you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that Microsoft's the underdog in the console space, but they're still they still got you somewhere. And, and, and they're they're one of the biggest companies in the world for a reason they're doing really uh they they know how to uh get your money in a lot of weird ways yeah anyway uh last news Silent multiple hill. silent hill projects are currently in development at studios around the world sources have told vgc and could include a remake full sequel and story uh, story-focused episodic series. Last week, a collection of leaked concept images appeared to confirm a new Silent Hill is or was in development. This followed a VGC story from last February in which we reported Konami was planning to revive the Long Dormant Horror franchise. Uh, now details are emerging on what some of those projects could look like. As first mentioned by influencer Nate the Hate and journalist Jeff Grubb, one of the in-development titles could be a remake of the fan favorite Silent Hill 2. Uh, this matches with VGC with what VGC has heard from our sources. It's claimed that the remake will feature reworked AI, animations, puzzles, and several new endings, and potentially released as a timed exclusive on PlayStation consoles. Uh, the Medium Studio uh, blooper team has also been linked with Silent Hill franchise constantly over the past 18 months. Last year, the Polish developer announced a strategic cooperation with uh, Konami. Months after Blooper CEO claimed it was working on an existing horror IP from a very famous gaming publisher, Silent Hills composer Akira Yamaoka even worked on Blooper Team's 2021 title, The Medium, and teased his next game project by stating it was the one you've been hoping to hear about. Blooper Team did not respond for a request for comment. Uh, uh, so, okay. So it looks like Silent uh, Konami is not evil anymore. They are looking to do things with their video game franchises. Uh, the biggest one, well, the biggest one would be Metal Gear, but the second biggest one is Silent Hill. Uh, they let that franchise die and rot horribly, and now they're trying again in earnest to get it back off the ground. Konami needs to just Maybe. sell their IPs. Just get rid of them. Yes. Yes, they need to do a Square Enix and just sell them. Yeah, I, ho- I hope that they see Square makes a lot of money with this, selling the IPs, and they're like, wait, we should do that. Because they're not making any money off of these anymore. It's not it's not worth it to them. They got other things they yeah. they seem to be uh, more interested in. They have in. a... I don't know, man. Like, Because when they put together like the classic collections, like the, the Castlevania Anniversary Collection or the Contra Anniversary Collection, or even the upcoming Ninja Turtles one, like they, they put time and effort into it, mm-hmm. and they release good stuff. It's just... The new stuff sucks or it's non-existent. I know that they sell a lot of the classic and anniversary stuff, and that is good stuff, but it can't possibly be a lot of money in terms of 
such a big company, you know, like, right. It's probably like pennies compared to what they make in all of their other uh, markets that they're in. And it's probably a lot less compared to what a new game would do. Right. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, yeah uh, Castle, the Castlevania collection probably did very well, but a new Castlevania game could do even better. Right. Because that's not something we've played before. Right. Uh, I mean, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I'm still waiting for Blue yeah. Point to come out with their freaking Metal Gear uh, remake <laughs> that we've that's oh, been yeah. rumored forever. So, uh, also, this is another thing where it could be in development and then just never comes out. Just like everything else, Konami has had their fucking uh, uh, their uh, t- 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 toe dipped in for years. The last the last Silent Hill just didn't happen. It, it could just do that again. They, they seem to be not great to work with right now. Yeah. So, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Also, I'm not, I've never played Silent Hill. Have you played Silent Hill ever in your life? I tried playing Silent Hill too, and I was not in the right mindset for it. Cause it, I like played that game for an hour and did nothing. It, it's, uh, you played it like way after it came out, right? Yeah. I, I was in the wrong mindset cause I've tried to play it like resident evil. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing like Resident Evil. You're supposed to take your time in Silent Hill mm-hmm. and, you know, avoid com you're supposed to avoid combat in Resident Evil as much as possible, but you're really not supposed to get involved in fights in Silent Hill. So one of these days I will go back to that and try to play it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh Bushin R- Ryu Cat says, uh with 190 bits. Said Wolf then, fellow New Yorkers, please help. Have you heard if I update both my PS3 and Vita to whatever the new update is, I can no longer back up, restore my Vita games on my PS3? I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a feature uh, on the PS3 and the Vita where like you can download, you can basically back up your games from the Vita to the PS3 and save them on the PS3. Can't play them, but you can store them there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess that an update bricked that feature, so you can't do that anymore. <laughs> that sucks. I haven't turned on my PS3 in God knows how long. I haven't turned on my Vita in even longer than that. So, I don't know, man. I really I, don't I, want to turn on my PS3 and Vita and test this. I've never actually used that feature either. I would, I just would not rely on the PlayStation 3 to back up and restore your Vita. That doesn't. That seems like a recipe for failure. That's probably homebrew uh, uh, the solutions to that that you could find. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to take my Vita and I'm going to homebrew it. So, because uh, yeah. I can't imagine wanting to pick up my Vita for any other reason. <laughs> um, anyway, also Tynology, hello. Uh, with the 13 months, probably missed the Curse to Golf discussion. Poop, you did. We talked about it before. You did. I didn't even know it was in the direct, in the indie world situation. It was in the, uh, it's in the, 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 the highlights. Oh my God. I can't think. The yes. highlights. Yes. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's it. That's all the news. Oh, good. That means it's time for stuff that the, we do the, every week on this, this show. This This one's a callback. This one's a quote uh, tweet from underscore Zeus. Uh, the quote is, what if Peter, meaning Parker, took the Infinity Gauntlet, snapped, and said to Tony, I just wanted to be like you as his dying words. And then the quote tweet says, what if Morbius took the gauntlet, snapped, and said, it's Morbin time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope that catches on. <laughs> it's Morbin time. That's like a. It's like I hope. A, I hope that was the say. guy who did the "It's Morbin Time" tweet. I hope it's the same guy. I think it might be. <laughs> I think that movie's now out, like for digital rental. I kind of want to see what kind of a shit show that movie is. You should do that, and then also make a video about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste. I'm not going to waste me editing a premiere on Morbius. <laughs> uh, Scott the Sauce says, Will, do you wash that hat or do you just roll it around in dirt and step it, in, uh, and step on it to clean it? 
with 100 bits. Thank you. It Bladder. does look it does look pretty rough right now. Is this, is this even Oh, I think this is my good hat. <laughs> this isn't my sweat covered hat. Oh, you have multiples. You, it's you're like a cartoon character. I, I have two, yeah. Luibic, thank you for the 13 months. Uh, all right, now we're going to talk to you people real quick. Yes, starting with people who left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. We have Derek Allstorn who says, speaking of Nintendo software, Nintendo may be lowballing those numbers, but with what looks but with what likely looks like a recession coming, oh boy, I think all companies will be reporting lower numbers for the foreseeable future. I just had a conversation with one of my friends who was trying to get me to uh, put all of my savings into into uh, uh, like like you know like like mutual funds or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, "Listen, man, I don't. Th- I listen. I think 2008 is going to happen again eventually, and I think everyone's <laughs> going to get fucked." So I'd rather yeah. hide it all. And uh, invest. Yeah, I agree. Invest I think, in gold. <laughs> I trust nobody. Yeah. Put all of your money under your mattress with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Um. Monkey school says, "I feel like Nintendo doesn't need to make another console for years. Just make a Switch Lite 2.0." And things like that, they have the perfect concept for a console and also making it easier to transfer your shit to another Switch would also help a lot in people uh, owning multiple Switches. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I just think that we're at the point where uh, the Switch's hardware is not going to be able to keep up with the uh, current games that are coming out. So yeah, eventually they're going to hit a wall with what they can do with the Nintendo Switch in terms of like developing games for it. But I say and... this all the time. I think there's room in the market for a severely underpowered console. Nintendo should have your $300 main boy and a little cheeky $100, $150 guy like this that'll run, uh, you know, like small indie stuff because yeah, most of the games that people are playing on the Switch... Are, are severely underpowered for the switch right we have leah leanne 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 we have leanne here who says i wish they wouldn't yell so loud at the start i'm wearing headphones you should just know in the beginning of the podcast you're gonna get your whole life ruined <laughs> listen we are sicilian americans mm-hmm. we're just loud by default mm-hmm. it's who we are can't accept who we are i don't know go watch the nintendo podcast there's an australian <laughs> on there there's a little more of a balance on the nintendo yeah. podcast uh chubbs the owl says sad to see the switch sales slowing down but it has been five years so it would bound it was bound to happen whatever nintendo does for hardware after the switch i really hope it's backwards compatible i'm not going to hold out hope though yeah i think it's i think that's a smart idea to i mean obviously everybody wants it to be backwards compatible um but i don't know man nintendo's nintendo has been doing some wacky things with their consoles recently so expect expect the worst prepare for the best uh david barber says come on bob just donate your ps5 to will since you don't like it and he needs next uh, next gen no <laughs> oh, i was saying while you were taking a pee that the whole, you know, if Microsoft does implement like that uh, whole put a disc in your Xbox One, play it on your, X, on your Series S. Because I've been looking at getting a Series S so I can play Gotham Knights when I'm going to play it. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have all these physical games for Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. And I would have to keep my Xbox One hooked up in addition to my series S if I wanted to play it. But if they implement something like that, then I wouldn't have to. It would be, they could just make a disc drive that you freaking uh, plug True. It, or just allow external Blu-ray support. Yeah. Although I guess that'd be USB. So that might be a bottleneck. Well, but I, mean, I have just a... installing it on the no. console. I have an external USB player and that's USB three. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's what the Xbox Series S has in the front. Mm-hmm. So that should be fine to to rip a Blu-ray. Yeah, but I mean it's different. What the what the disc drive is connected to is different than what the USB three on the outside. Like like all it should just rip the game though. You're not you're not right. actually running the game off of the disc. You know it, you're getting the you're getting the data needed to authenticate right. the game. Right. Yeah. That should be it. Um. So yeah, that it's no reason why you shouldn't be able to just plug in a a friggin' external Blu-ray yeah. player. That would be sick. Um, but the Xbox Series S is fantastic. Yeah. Um, all right, now we're in the chat real quick. Okay. Uh, 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 why is there two wolf? Because our <laughs> parents had sex at least twice. Yes. At minimum tw- two times. Uh... Bob, have you ever played any of the Fallout games? If so, what do you think of them? I didn't like them. I played Fallout Three for like a long time. I got pretty. Far. I think I got all the way to the end and then and then stopped. Uh, I got all the way to the end and I was like, "Why am I playing this?" <laughs> I remember uh, watching you play Fallout Three one time and you were complaining that you were moving so slowly, and mm-hmm. you realized that the gear you have adds weight to your character, and the yeah. more you add, the more weight you have, and the slower you move. And that I probably played the whole game over encumbered, and that's why I hated it so yeah. much. <laughs> but also, the biggest deal with that game was the uh, uh, the what, what was that system called? The aiming system. Oh, the, it, sl- it slowed down time. That, and you picked a, the VAT v, system. V A T S. That's where, where time slowed down. You picked the body part, and that's the body part you shot. The whole reason yeah. they implemented that feature was because the shooting in that game was so fucking bad they needed to have a solution and there's that was their solution i mean it worked <laughs> it worked it worked because people liked the game it didn't make the yeah. game any good in my eyes i saw right through that shit i was like this is a shooter that is just bad <laughs> yeah. but that's the thing is that it wasn't supposed to be a shooter it was supposed to be like an rpg yeah, but it's like a real time RPG, and I don't play a lot of RPGs. I was hoping it was a shooter. Also, I I that was one of the only games I went to Best Buy and bought it off of almost no uh, research. I went to Best Buy and I bought the game, and I was like, "Wait, this isn't an online game." <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he learned a valuable lesson. Never play uh, video games. That was the lesson. Yeah. Never, never ever are bad. play video games ever. Uh, Razzle Jazzle. Will, do you have any thoughts on the mid-2000s cartoon, The Batman Heard Good Things and Wondering If It Was Worth a Watch? It is. It is a very good cartoon. I feel like people skipped over it at the time because it was the successor to Batman the Animated Series, the greatest Batman cartoon of all time. And it didn't really do anything too different from Batman. It portrayed the characters as younger and did like different takes on the villains, but it was still more or less a straightforward adaptation of Batman when we had just gotten the best straightforward adaptation of Batman, but it had a really good style. It had really good soundtrack. The performances are very good. Um, As the show progresses through the seasons, uh, it gets better and it has unique story arcs to it, so I would say definitely check it out. Uh, Tech Nanner says, turns out you really don't want an online for, uh, Fallout game. <laughs> <laughs> good point. True. Very good point. Yeah. Uh, uh, who else thinks the Switch will pull a Nintendo 64 where they won't get any big third-party support, says Carson Ogan. Uh, I mean, they they already bar- support. Yeah, they've done pretty good. I mean, yeah. the, our Switch in the very beginning had very rough third party support. It took a really yes. long time for them to get some good third party support. And yeah. some third and parties still don't give a shit about it. Like EA doesn't give a shit about the EA, Switch. Yeah, Activision doesn't care. Uh, but I think the third parties that do support the Switch support it pretty well. Uh, and I think that the influx of indie games more than makes up for any third parties that are not on Switch. Yeah, I think uh, 
I think there'll be more third parties interested in a Switch too, for sure, especially at yeah. launch. Um, the first Switch third parties were very skeptical of. Uh, and you could read more about it in the book, uh, uh, the Retro Dodo book that's coming out, because I wrote all about the launch of the Switch. Um, Bob talked about the Fall Guys news. Actually, we haven't talked about Fall Guys at all. Fall Guys is coming yeah, to Switch. That, I completely I forgot. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be free to play. Yeah, that's which I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. Uh, people are somebody tweeted like, "Oh, that sucks for everybody who bought Fall Guys." No, I bought Not it two like really. two years ago. I'm yeah. more than happy to get it for free on my Switch now. You know? Yeah. And it's cross progression and save and everything, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna give it a shot again when it's on the Switch finally. Um, it's not available on the Steam Deck because of uh the anti cheat. Unless they fixed that, oh. I don't think I don't think they did though. And people who bought it will get the legacy pack. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Good. I hope I get that. Actually, wait, I it wasn't on PlayStation Plus. I don't even think I ever bought it. <laughs> I think it just No, it was on PlayStation Plus. It was. I think I just got it when it came out on PlayStation Plus, and that was it. Actually, no, I did I definitely bought it on Steam. Uh anyway. Uh, Kate McCat. S. This is a weird niche question that may may not know the answer to, but is there a way to emulate old PC CD ROM games? Yes. Uh yes. We are not the people who can answer that for you. There are MS DOS emulators. Yes. Uh DOSBox is the most popular uh one. In fact, if you buy games off of GOG that were originally from the DOS era, it comes wrapped in DOSBox. So if you're looking to emulate DOS games, that's what you need. In terms of like like Windows 95 PC CD-ROM games, I don't know. Some of them will just straight up work on, on Windows yeah. uh, 10. Uh, some of them you might have to fuss with your system settings. Like I remember one time I wanted to play a PC game and I had to set the CPU to single core. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. I have Chips Challenge. You can get it on Steam. So if that's there what you, you go. play, there you go. Uh, I don't know about Space Dude, though. It's been a while since I played that one. Um, anyway, opinions on Activision the last few years. Uh, trash company. Bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't... I mean, I've been, I've been liking Call of Duty Warzone, except for the latest update. That, or not yeah. the latest. Caldera, when they re replaced the map, it went straight to shit. Hopefully the next one's good. But otherwise, there I have not liked Activision. There was an interesting like two years when they put out the crash bandicoot collection and then crash four and then the spiral collection and then Tony Hawk collection where you're like, Oh, they seem to actually care about their back catalog and doing games other than call of duty. And then they fucked it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Not just with all the scandals and stuff by making all those developers go to work on call of duty and completely ruining, uh, well, they didn't ruin blizzard, but like, the idea that Blizzard would make a game and support it for years, and Activision's like, no, you must make Overwatch 2. <laughs> yeah, you Even must if it's make the same thing as Overwatch 1. You must make the same game again and just call yes. it 2. Yes. This time, make all the day levels night and the night levels day. Yeah. Do that at least. That's at how you know it's least. a different game. Um, anyway, goodbye. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than to watch, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts. No. Well, Yes. We're also an audio <laughs> podcast on anchor anchor anchor.fm slash wolfden podcast. Anchor.fm slash wolfden podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, whatnot. Uh, but no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and view us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, thanks for being here. I'll be back on Thursday, hopefully. Uh, I'll have a video out on Thursday. We're going to have the Nintendo podcast launched on Thursday over on uh, YouTube.com. Actually, there's no vanity URL. You just got to like Google Nintendo podcast. I think you need like a thousand subscribers for a vanity podcast for a vanity uh, URL. Well, we have so get that. on it. 
we have it. It's just, I think it takes a minute for the vanity to actually show up. <laughs> uh, but, or I think we can, you can go to nintendopodcast.com. I don't know how this works. Uh, you'll find it. I think the podcast is launching Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I think. And it's going to be one of those like premiere situations. Uh, so we'll be in the chat, whatever. Um, so we got the podcast. We got a new video on the Wolf Den account, hopefully, unless I fuck it up tomorrow. And we have, I'll be streaming on Twitch on Thursday night. There you go. Thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you later on the next Wolf Den podcast. Goodbye. Say hello to AJ right now. Bye.